We've been in business for five years now, and this is the last place I think I was going to end up having, you know, this work fall on me. Basically, how I came around working here at Kendall, you know, I met Billy back in the fall of 2011. It started out, we were doing a record for VP, this Dub Rockers record. We were doing a version of Java. It's going to get Clive to come into the studio and kind of oversee the production of the song. Actually, I really wanted was to get my foot back into the music business after being absent from it for a while. You know, it was um, pretty much low-key for a good 15, 20 years. Came upstairs, you know, and I met Billy for the first time. We rented the tape machine, Clive came down and he, he brought the reel, the original reel uh, of Java. I knew Pablo before he got involved in the music because he was a schoolmate of mine. We went to school together. I actually invited him down to Randy's. When I invited him down, I invited him down as a session musician. You know, he, he plays um, piano and then, you know, he picked up the melodica, which was a wind instrument, you know. The song was originally recorded for an artist, another schoolmate of mine. The voice never materialized because, you know, the young lad couldn't put it together. And Errol said to me, and as a good rhythm you have here, you shouldn't, you know, let this thing go to waste. Wipe the voice and we can use this as an instrumental. And that's how the idea of putting Pablo on it came about, you know, getting Pablo to do the, the melodica, you know, put a lead on it. We went on to do an album. The record went number one. It was devoted the best instrumental for 1972. I, I would say that this Pablo's first debut album, I produced it. We started with, like I said, the handful of reels, and then he was like, I got one inch tapes, I got two inch tapes. You know, how long do you have this machine for? It started out with one tape, transferring one tape to get one thing, which turned into 15, which then, I was getting batches of, of tapes coming in, you know, 50, 60 at a time. In the studio now, I have about 150 to 200 tapes. I found out that there's about 600 more. So <laughs> it's not just one song from one artist, one song from another artist. It's something that's adding to the whole book of reggae music, which in turn, the world of reggae music is a different place because some of these things have been put out into the, into the world. It's like taking out something from the freezer that was cooked 40 years ago, make it taut, and then you start adding seasoning to it. And then you, you, know, you bring a nice flavor back in. You, know. you wouldn't believe, say, it was cooked 40 years ago because it was kept well frozen, you know what I mean? Right. So when it thaws out and the pot started to bubble, you start putting in your thyme and your pimento and your fresh pepper, Cut up some carrot and some chocho and some turnip and roll two spinners and throw it out. Yeah, man. Get the pot. Mommy come in and say, What you cooking, Clive? Eh? What you cooking, <laughs> Prince Polo? It and smells just, good. It will smell good. We say, Mommy, that's what you cooked 40 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> there were um, tapes that I came across. I remember them, you know, because my handwriting is on quite a few of them. They really draw back great memories, you know, like some of the public tapes and some of the tapes that I worked with, with um, Family Man Barrett, Max Romeo, you know, Jimmy London, Alton Ellis, Arten Ellis, the Gladiators, the African Brothers. So, you know, when I saw those tapes and I remember them, you know, it brought back a, a warm smile on my face because I'm saying, I'm looking back into history now. You know, here is it, and I'm even holding a tape that I remember having in my hand 40 years ago. 
you know, and uh, I thought of it and I said, it feels as if the presence of that time just flashed back in your mind. Again, we'd either use one mic or sometimes we might use four mics, but in this case, it was just one mic. You combine the keyboards, the rhythm guitar, and the pick guitar, which is that guitar with the wah wah sound. Put a little reverb on it, get that splash. You know, and the horns in the background. You can play around with the rhythm in and out. You know. Now we hear the voice, now we hear the voice now. This is lead voice. We have Max Romeo doing the lead. Solo. Background voices on this. Again, my son was the one that actually, you know, motivated me to move more rapidly and get in the tapes and transferred. And Billy, you know, decided to come on board to get this done properly. There's a different process you have to do, like with restoring and archiving stuff. But you want to make sure everything is, you know, perfect. I'm trying to do my best to make sure that nobody's going to be able to tell it's an overdone. That's why I and greatest in records, see Randy's at 17 North Parade. Also auto decorations, radios, record changers, plus 1,000 odd items. Come and see us, Randy's at 17 North Parade. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings, both online, wherever you are, and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.